Hi everyone, welcome to How You Came to Be. When I select homes to research, I often don't pick the biggest or most beautiful homes because I want to explore the lives of everyday people and not the most wealthy. But this beautiful property in Kingsport, Tennessee has two unique homes which provide two different tales of Tennessee history. The history of this property can be traced back to the Cherokee tribe who lived on this land for hundreds of years prior to the arrival of Europeans. They were hunters, gatherers, and farmers whose main source of sustenance was corn. Between 1756 and 1776, the Cherokees were continuously engaged in battle against the British, first in the French and Indian War, and later in the Revolutionary War. Around the time the original home on this property was built in 1790, Cherokees were signing treaties, leaving their land to white settlers, although many were later forcibly removed. There is conflicting information on the first European holder of this land. A 1959 newspaper article says that King Charles I of England granted 325 acres of land to Frederick A. Ross, a wealthy Virginian. However, this home's application for the National Registry of Historic Places says that the land was part of 1,280 acres owned by Christian Rhodes and James Maneffi, who then sold part of it to Ross. There are numerous early land records to support possible ownership by Christian Rhodes and James Maneffi, who owned large plots of land in the area. But records are clear that by 1790, Frederick A. Ross owned the land. He likely had this cabin built for and by his agents, who were in Tennessee to establish an iron foundry. Ross likely never lived in this home, as he built the very opulent Rutherford Mansion in 1818, less than three miles away. This property was sold to David Sevier around 1847. David was the nephew of John Sevier, the first governor of Tennessee. The Sevier family fled from France to England and arrived in the U.S. colonies by 1740. David Sevier was born October 5, 1821 in Virginia. He married Annis Rutledge Netherland on October 1, 1845. Annis was born in 1825 and grew up here at the Netherland Inn, a popular stagecoach stop which her family operated for nearly 100 years. David and Annis moved into this home shortly after their marriage. It is here that they welcomed six children, five daughters and a son. Their second daughter, Isabel, was born here in 1853. She ran and played in these rooms, which still looked like a rustic log cabin. She married Samuel Kyle in 1879, as seen here in their wedding photo, and lived to be 82 years old. David and Annis' fifth daughter, Nellie, also grew up here, as did youngest son, David. David Sr. became involved in real estate, and he moved the original home a short distance on the property to make room for a new home to be built, which was completed in 1884. The new home was grand and stately, with a beautiful wraparound porch and all the finest Victorian features. By the time this home was completed, David and Annis were in their 60s, and their children were mostly grown. David Sr. passed away on May 20, 1890, living in this home for only six short years. Just a few months later, David and Annis' fourth daughter, Margaret, who was born in the original home on March 19, 1862, lost her husband, Dr. Henry R. Morrison, on January 6, 1891. She then moved into this home with Mother Annis and Margaret's three children, Malcolm, age 9, Mabel, age 8, and Annie, age 6. Together, three generations made this home until Annis passed away in 1898. Both Annis and David Sr. are buried in the family cemetery on the property. Sadly, Margaret passed away on March 6, 1900, at the age of 48. Malcolm was grown and able to live on his own, but by June of 1900, Mabel and Annie, aged 16 and 14, were living with their Aunt Nellie in Kingsport. It is unclear if anyone occupied this home between 1900 and 1905, but Mabel returned home and had held her wedding here in 1906. I expect that this home was a beautiful refuge following her father's early death, and a place full of fond memories of her mother, who perhaps Mabel could feel as she took her vows. Margaret and Henry's son Malcolm married Alice Eugenia Fane on June 21, 1908, and in 1916 they moved into the home with their two sons, Malcolm Jr., aged 5, and John, aged 1. Once again, these elegant halls were filled with the musings of young children at play. But it is here that Malcolm and Alice suffered the loss of a son in February 1919, due to premature birth, just a few months after the end of World War I and in the middle of the flu epidemic of 1918. Fortunately, many happier occasions also took place during the Morrisons' time in the home. 
the couple hosted their own golden wedding anniversary here in 1958. At the time, the home was furnished with antiques dating back generations, including a portrait of original builders of the brick home, David and Annis, which hung over the mantel. Malcolm Sr. and Alice's son, Malcolm Jr., lived in the original home with his family until his sudden death at home in December 1968 from a heart attack at the age of 57. Malcolm and Alice were likely devastated by the loss of their son, recalling memories of him here for more than 50 years. Malcolm Sr. and Alice continued living here until Malcolm Sr.'s death in 1972. Alice moved out of the home a short time later, at which point it fell into disrepair, until it was purchased in 1976 and fully restored to what we see today. This property is a structural representation of the growth and changes that took place in Tennessee and the United States over the first 200 years of their history. One home was built by the earliest settlers who made their way through fiercely contested Native American lands, tasked with establishing an iron foundry by wealthy landowner Frederick Ross, while the brick house features the grandeur of Victorian times, from the elegant dark wood furnishings and wide plank floors in the entryway, to the fireplaces that are a centerpiece of every room, which speaks to the great changes that took place in all facets of American life between 1790 and 1884. The property really is like traveling through time.